Okay, so clearly there's a global crypto craze going on. Some of your friends or their friends are either working in the space or they're invested into crypto. Maybe even you are. Some people argue that Bitcoin is the new money, while others are arguing that it's the new gold. Some even go as far as saying that it's the new internet. But which one is it? So it's only normal if you're asking yourself, what the f is going on? Hello again everybody, it's great to see you here, it's John from Cryptofy. In this channel we'll bring to you important news, concepts, we'll cover projects and we'll prepare to you step-by-step -step guides so that you can navigate your way through the stormy oceans of the crypto world. If this content is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Also, in the previous video, which was the first video of this channel, we were able to reach more than 200 views. Now this is actually amazing because I only sent the video to a couple of friends of mine. So if you like this video, please share it with your friends and let's maybe target 500 views this time. Before we proceed, please note that none of the content presented in this channel is neither financial nor legal advice. Please do your own research before you buy any kinds of cryptocurrencies, even if it's Bitcoin. And please note that all the content in this video is purely for entertainment and informational purposes. And apparently, if I don't make that statement correctly, I will most likely go to jail. And I don't want to go to jail because I'm still young. At least I'll feel that way. At least I tell myself that. In any case, in today's video, we'll finally learn exactly what cryptocurrencies are. And even if you don't care about them, why you should at least know about them. We will therefore elaborate on the blockchain technology in a nutshell. We will also touch upon a few examples, including Bitcoin, and discuss what these projects are good for. This video is divided into chapters for your convenience, so feel free to skip to a part that piques your interest. Otherwise, I strongly urge you to watch this video from start to finish, as there are some really important information and really interesting ideas along the way. These being said, let's dive in. I'll give it to you straight ahead. Cryptocurrency is a form of digital asset. It's digital and it's an asset. So first it's digital. Not much to explain there, but it simply exists on the digital realm as a computer code. And second, it's an asset. An asset may be defined as an valuable item or a valuable thing that is owned by someone or a company. Examples to digital assets include things like audio files, video files, image files, pics, documents, certificates, and things like that. Digital assets that come in the form of cryptocurrencies, however, are rather different and are designed to act as a medium of exchange, a medium of exchange of value. So this medium of exchange is designed to transact value from one party to the other, just like money. Yet crypto is more than just money and there must be something unique about them given all the global fuss. I mean, even Elon Musk had laser eyes at one point. Oh, and if you don't know, having laser eyes means that you have strong advocacy towards crypto. It means that you are very bullish about it. I mean, here's Elon with laser eyes, here's Paris Hilton, here's Tyler Winklevoss, here's Cameron Winklevoss, here's Tom Brady. However, people having laser eyes and showing strong enthusiasm towards crypto is not what makes crypto valuable. It is actually the main features of the underlying technology. So let's, let's discuss that next, and that just may put lasers on your eyes as well. There are three key features of cryptocurrencies. They run on a blockchain, they exist on a decentralized network, and transaction details are encrypted. Okay, these three things may sound a bit nerdy, but hear me out because it's actually quite fascinating. A blockchain essentially is a database. They also call blockchain a digital ledger because it holds the records of transactions. So essentially it's a digital notebook. In the case of Bitcoin's blockchain, for example, BTC transaction records are held. So for instance, Jack sends Mike to BTC. So that transaction is recorded in that digital ledger, that digital notebook. The blockchain. Now it's only fair at this point that you ask why don't they just simply call it the digital notebook or the ledger, but why do they call it the blockchain? Well that's because this digital ledger is designed in a particular way. It literally is a chain of blocks. Now these blocks can be visualized as notebooks, okay? And this chain of blocks can be visualized as notebooks piled on top of each other. In the case of Bitcoin's blockchain for example, each block on the chain consists of transactions, Bitcoin transactions, that took place in the past 10 minutes on average. 
Therefore, a new block is added to the chain in approximately every 10 minutes. So what that means is, for instance, your Bitcoin transaction is going to take approximately 10 minutes to successfully execute on the chain. And that's because transactions can only be successfully realized once the network verifies these blocks. It's just like a number of accountants gathering together in an accountant's party, checking each other's notebooks to see if they recorded everything correctly. And therefore, a transaction can only successfully occur once these accountants agree that the transactions are recorded correctly. So what this leads to is if one of the accountants wanted to change the ledger, say a particular transaction, say he wanted to increase the number of BTCs in his wallet, he wouldn't be able to because the rest of the accountants were going to say, no, that's not the case. So the ledger is not corruptible. But how do these accountants get together and say, no, that's not how things happened. And how do they successfully maintain the blockchain? Well, that leads us to the second main feature of cryptocurrencies, decentralization. If you feel like you're learning something new, like this video for the YouTube algorithm and share it with your friends if you think that it's of value to them as well. As the name suggests, this decentralized digital ledger, hence the blockchain, is not only stored in one particular place or a number of places. It is actually stored and processed in thousands of different computers around the world simultaneously. I mean, even my grandmother has a computer running the Bitcoin blockchain. <laughs> no, she doesn't. So through this, even if some of the nodes are turned off, the blockchain would still exist because it is being recorded and processed in many different places at the same time. You actually may have heard about these people who are operating these computer nodes to sustain the blockchain as miners. So if my grandmother had in fact purchased a computer node, she would have been a miner. These miners are of course investing and maintaining these computer nodes, which is actually quite energy, con energy intensive. Uh, they are therefore rewarded in Bitcoin, hence they are mining. If they wanted to maintain the Ethereum blockchain instead of Bitcoin, then they would be rewarded in Ethereum. Also, let me know down below if you're already mining or if this is something that you would be interested in. So miners essentially run these specialized computers to hold records of transactions and validate them to maintain the blockchain. So if a particular miner wanted to change the transaction and increase its BTC holdings, all the other computers are going to recognize this change and they're going to say, no, this is not how we validated it. Okay, now that we understood the continuously updated digital ledger, let's proceed with the third main feature, encryption. Now don't get scared from the word encryption just because it sounds technical. It's actually very useful and very interesting. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to break it down into its basic elements and explain to you why it matters so much. So each block that contains your transaction details is encrypted. The private information of the parties involved in the transaction, therefore, is out of reach. For example, if you navigate to a blockchain explorer and you try to find the transaction that took place when Jack sent Mike the two bitcoins, you will see the two bitcoin transaction, but you will not know that it is Jack sending Mike or vice versa. Now, the most important encryption feature here is that whenever a new block is encrypted, that encryption process utilizes information coming from the previous block. So they take information coming from the previous block as well as information within the new block and constitute a new encryption. Now, because of this, the previous block had used information coming from the previous one and then the previous one and then the one before that. It's kind of like a human centipede. The one and the one before and then the one before. It was, a, it was a horrible analogy. So if someone wanted to change a transaction that happened in a previous block, that would invalidate all the blocks coming after that one because these new blocks, these relatively new blocks, were utilizing information from that particular block trying to be changed. But that cannot happen because all these follow-up blocks are already verified. All the accountants are going to say no. I just can't get over the human centipede. So the blockchain network is designed and encrypted in a way so that previous transactions that are already verified cannot be tampered with. Hence, the blockchain cannot be corrupted. These three key features, therefore, make the crypto digital asset unique in the sense that it's much more secure and everlasting. And it is, used, it is being used as a medium of exchange of value among different parties. It is the hardest network to shut down, tamper with, hack or censor. Okay, now that we have a solid base layer that crypto assets can be issued on, let's explore who issues them and where they come from. 
Now, the first thing to know is that the digital assets issued on a blockchain, such as coins and tokens, are issued so that they can represent the share of the total value of an underlying project. By the way, if a crypto asset has its own blockchain, a blockchain designed for that particular asset, then it's called a coin. If that asset runs on a different blockchain, then it's called a token. So for instance, Bitcoin is a coin. Ethereum is a coin. Uniswap that runs on Ethereum is a token. This is very similar to applications running on the Apple iOS, except this time these are not called apps, they are called dApps because they are decentralized applications. These assets are typically issued by either a group of people or a company for a particular project, primarily with the purpose of raising finances for their project. Those who hold these tokens and coins therefore hold a particular share of the total value underlying the project. Therefore, the more valuable the project, the more valuable the coin or token. Actually, these coins and tokens represent much more than just a share and they actually have certain functions, but that is a subject for a different video. Now, let's go through some examples. There are some really revolutionary projects out there that you don't want to miss out on. That being said, none of these are financial advice. Please note and please do your own research before buying any of these coins or any other coin for that matter. For instance, with Theta Network, you can share your unutilized internet bandwidth with other people such as gamers so that even if they don't have a really fast internet, they can use your bandwidth to share in say 4K so that they can stream in a higher quality. Now, if you Google Theta, you will see that their website states the Theta token. Now, Theta has its own blockchain and therefore it's a coin. But the reason why they say Theta token was most likely because the differences between the terminologies coins and tokens were not coined back then. Similarly, through the Filecoin project, you're able to utilize and therefore monetize your unused hard, drives, hard drive space for cloud data storage. This way, the wasted digital storage space in millions of computers can now be utilized for cloud storage in a decentralized and encrypted manner. The more these services are used, the more valuable these projects will become and therefore the more valuable these coins will become. Bitcoin, for example, has only one job and that is to be. Because Bitcoin is acting as a store of value. So its only job is to store its value and nothing else. And therefore to be, to exist and to be valuable in the eyes of many. So the more this perception grows on people, the more people will want a part of Bitcoin and therefore the more valuable it will become. Just like gold. Except it's much better than gold because it's divisible, it's transferable and it's much more secure. Let me know down below if you think you know a very promising project so that I will look into it. Maybe I'll make a video about it. And that's it for today guys. Uh, like the video if you liked it, share it with your friends if you think that it was valuable. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more and ding the dong to be notified. See you later.